How many have you forgiven today? Chapter 22, Part 2 So, what do you think? Blossom asks with a smirk, as she gives a small twirl for Anon. Anon can't believe he's actually here doing this right now. Blossom dragged him to a store he's never been to before, spent 30 minutes grabbing dresses off a few racks, forced him to sit in front of a dressing stage as she put on dress after dress after dress, and asked him how she looks. He's already been here for over an hour, and his patience is starting to wear thin. <sighs> Blossom, I don't care. You look fine. Take either of those statements and let's leave already. You're no fun. I'm trying to look good for your party. Blossom states as she looks herself in the various mirrors surrounding her on the stage. Why do you care what I think? Anon asks. <sighs> Anon. It may seem like a weird concept for you to take in, but mares like looking pretty for stallions they care for. Maybe it's a primal thing, but we like impressing a stallion with our looks, even if they're just friends. Anon still has a hard time understanding how ponies work on a social level. All he can really do is take Blossom's word for it. You're implying that other ponies are gonna play dress up as well? Blossom chuckles at that. <laughs> of course they are. This is your party after all, and you've collected a loyal following of mares. Blossom flexes her wings some to see how the dress feels. In fact, since you have so many friends that are mares, I'd expect most of them will go above and beyond to impress you with how they look. <sighs> this is all confusing. Why? Blossom shrugs. Mares can get rather competitive with each other for a stallion's attention. Again, it's mostly a primal thing. Kind of like Estrus. This is getting a lot more personal than Anon was hoping for, so he decides to change the subject. Uh, I assume wearing a dress into battle isn't a smart move? Blossom easily catches the hint to move on. Other than the surprise factor, it's never a good idea. Anon lets out a long sigh. He can't believe this turn of events. Now you're making me think I need a new suit. If everyone's going to go all out, then it seems appropriate that I at least try my best. It doesn't hurt to impress. I'm not looking to impress. Just make things even. Still, looking nice never hurt anyone. Blossom gives herself a single nod. Ugh, this dress will do fine. She turns to a mare next to her that's covered in used dresses. I'll take this one. And can your seamstress assist my stallion with a nice suit? He's got an important party coming up and a whole lot of mares vying for his attention. <sighs> your stallion? Anon scoffs. I wasn't aware our relationship had taken so many leaps and bounds. Blossom shrugs again. Get used to it, stud. You'd be surprised by how many mares want to make that thought into a reality. Anon has nothing to say about that. The fact is that he already knows of a single pony that tried, and failed. He feels his mood sour a bit as his mind returns to Lyra. He just... doesn't get it. He shakes those thoughts away as he returns his attention to Blossom. This world is confusing. There's so much of it that he doesn't understand. Right this way, sir. The mare that's covered in dresses speaks out as she turns and walks away. Anon is brought from the thought and is impressed by the fact that the mare is navigating with ease. Despite not being able to see anything, he decides to follow her as this is a good excuse to take his mind off of everything that's been happening. Blossom gives herself a once-over in the mirror. Yeah, I look sexy. Too bad she isn't interested in relationships anymore, but still, it's funny messing with Anon. Oh my, what a lovely dress. May I ask where you got it? Blossom looks over to see Fluttershy standing there. Oh, an interesting turn of events. Uh, yeah, over there. Blossom points Fluttershy towards a podium where Anon is standing, a mare taking his measurements. Blossom can hear Anon giving the mare various answers about what he is, and some other things that aren't important. However, Fluttershy's eyes widen as she instantly locks onto Anon. 
I didn't know when Han was here. Is he getting ready for the party too? He is. Fluttershy jumps a bit, having forgotten Blossom was there. Oh, you're a friend of his? Yeah, I'm also his guard. Captain Blossom of the Lunar Knights. Lunar Knights? That sounds important. It was at one time. Not so much nowadays. Blossom clears her throat. So I assume you're looking to get something for his party as well? Fluttershy nods with a small blush. Yes, it seems like an important party, so I thought dressing up would be nice. <laughs> for the party, or for Anon? Blossom remarks with a smirk. Fluttershy's wings snap open at hearing that. What? No! Well, he he's a very nice creature, but I don't think I'm ready for something so sudden. I mean, we barely even know each other! Don't worry, I'm just messing with you. Fluttershy lets out a sigh. Okay, I did mean what I said, though. He's very sweet. <laughs> Complicated? But yeah, he's sweet. Fluttershy snaps back to why she came to the store in the first place. Sorry to have bothered you. I think I'll just look at the dresses over there. She points to an area exactly opposite of where Nan is. Still a few hours left till the party. Good luck in finding something nice. Thank you. Have a good night, Blossom. You too, Fluttershy. Fluttershy hides behind her mane as she walks off to the other side of the store. As Blossom turns to where Anon was, she notices that he's already walking towards her. It seems that he's a little bit irritated, but hasn't noticed Fluttershy at all. Are you done yet? He asks, as soon as he's standing beside Blossom. Yep, you? Yeah, the only saving grace of that mare is that she's fast. Anon lets out a long sigh. I hate getting clothes made. Anon walks past Blossom as he heads on over to the cash register. Standing there is the mare that was once covered in clothes. She already has a suit sitting beside the register, neatly folded and waiting for packaging. How much for the dress and suit? Anon asks. 600 bits. The mare answers. Anon doesn't hesitate as he pulls out the bits and places them on the counter. The mare is quick to putting his belonging into the bag. Anon waits as Blossom takes off her dress and the mare carefully places it into the bag as well. Let's get out of here. Anon states as he grabs the bag and walks out of the store. It seems that whatever Anon experienced with Twilight has made him hate getting his measurements taken. But then again, maybe it wasn't Twilight that put that anger into him. I must admit you look lovely, sister. How long has it been since you've used your natural mane in public? Luna asks. For quite some time. I do hope it doesn't draw too much of a crowd at the party. Luna giggles. Luck is on your side. Anon's not known for having large parties. Though, I'm sure there will be a few ponies that will take notice. Though, you won't go this path alone. Luna looks herself over in the mirror as she drags her sister to her side with a wing. Gaze upon our beauty, Tia. Why, I remember a time when ponies would weep to see their leaders in such a way. Celestia takes a moment to actually look not only at herself, but her sister as well. She does a few sidelong poses to get a better look at herself, and Luna's right. They do look rather fit for this night. It makes me wonder why we don't do this more. Well, to be honest, I only wish to look this good for Anon. I feel my beauty would be wasted on those that fall to the wayside. A sentiment that I mirror, though it's hard to look like this for Anon all the time. Luna nods. That is true, so we will keep this special for him. We wouldn't want to bore him too quickly, right? Right. Luna looks over to the clock and catches the time. Perfect. The party is just about to start. Quickly, Tia, we must return to the dining hall. I'll be right with you, Lulu. Give me one moment. Very well, but do not keep the party waiting. Luna takes off and leaves Celestia alone. Celestia is looking at herself in the mirror as she takes in a few deep breaths. She needs to calm down before Anon sees her. She doesn't want him possibly seeing through her with that gaze of his. Celestia shivers some. 
Oh, how I hope for this to become the fairy tale I've always wished for. She can think of no one better than Anon, and while she knows it'll be rough, it's something worth fighting for. Ready, stud? Blossom asks as Anon puts on a suit. <sighs> Just about. Time. Five minutes. We'll get there. Anon looks past his mirror and at the reflection of Blossom as she rests on his bed. I... Anon looks away from Blossom as she looks over at him. I enjoyed today, Blossom. As rough as the start was, you made it somewhat bearable. Well, it was nice talking about the past with someone, too. Blossom admits. Anon adjusts his tie once more. Already. He turns away from the mirror and finds Blossom already standing beside the door. After you? Anon smirks a little as he gives her a mock bow just before walking past her and towards the dining hall. Maybe this day doesn't have to end horribly. Oh, dude, but what if it did end horribly? Like, Osama just busted down into the room and then just... Okay, I don't know why the fuck I said that. But anyway, let's get on to our stunning donators. Top donators are 630, Only One Thing, Saru Ryan, and Iron Sky. Darkside, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, and Marjorie, Omicron, Larry, Will, Chris, Twinky, Riot Soul, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, Chancellor Crest, Big Smoke 369, Bobcat, GJF, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.